Sanshan, meeting a courier en route to the capital. If I look eastward toward my old home, the road is much too long. My sleeves are soaked, my tears will not stop falling. We met on horseback, no paper or ink or brushes. So I ask you just to carry my words, tell them I'm safe. So, we continue with heptasyllabic quatrains, and this is actually the seventh and last poem by Tsun Shen included in this anthology. Very brief recap, if you don't remember who Tsun Shen was, he is a relatively important high tang poet, mainly flourishing in the years immediately before and after the Al Dushan Rebellion. He was an acquaintance of some of the high tang poets, in fact, he was pretty close to Du Fu and uh, Gao Shi, among others, and uh, he passed the examinations already in the Tian Bao era or even earlier, but uh, he is very characteristic for having chosen in the 740s, 50s, a career in the military branch of the administration, which is not that common. So he served in different postings, basically in the northwestern frontier, in the area that was generally called An Shi, the pacified west or today the protectorate of the western regions, as in Central Asia, the Turkestan area, close to some of the main cities in the Silk Route, in the Silk Road. Now, this poem was written in the 740s, when he was in his 30s, I think, in going out for his first posting as a secretary of one of those military governors in the northwestern frontier. Now... Well, the, the, the title already summarizes the anecdote, that is, Tsun Shen is traveling to the western regions, which, is, which were pretty far away. On the road, he meets a, a courier, a messenger, who is going back to the capital from the western regions, and he takes the opportunity to, you know, exchange some words and a poem. Now, the topic of the poem is obviously traveling. Um, and as you remember, traveling is always a sad topic in classical Chinese poetry, it, with the focus on uprootedness, on the dangers the traveler experiences. These dangers are all the more um, empathetic in this poem because Sun Shen is actually going to the western regions, which were, you know, a frontier area where warfare and death were not so unlikely outcomes, even for a scholar official who might not be like him fighting with sword and shield in the, in the front lines. So the main topic of the poem is uh, parting from family and uh, friends and the sadness that is attendant on parting. And this sadness is brought to the fore in an encounter, in a chance encounter with a person, a messenger who's going the other way around. So uh, Tsun Shen takes the opportunity to send a message back home. Uh, so that's another topic, the sadness of parting, um, but uh, the making use of this opportunity of a fellow traveler being encountered who is going back to one's own place, which in this case, what Sun Shen would be his, the capital, Chang'an. And he gives a message, uh, with a very short one. I am okay. So remember, we're living in a time where distances were distances and miles were miles. The transportation was enormously slow, relatively faster by boat or by ship, but then subject to the hazards of, of sinking and storms. Uh, land communication was incredibly slow, even though uh, the, the Han, uh, the Tang, and even later dynasties would build good roadways and uh, post services so that messages from the court would take uh, the least of time traveling through different post stations. But still, you know, we're talking about a, a massive country, so going from the capital to the western regions would have probably taken months at the very least. So, I think, yeah, that's the general idea. The poem is pretty straightforward. You could say the topic is a bit conventional, although, you know, it is based on an actual subjective, personal experience of Sun Shen, and uh, it has a simplicity and directness to it, which probably matches the, well, both the pedagogical intentions of this anthology, but also the, the rough, unpolished spirit of frontier poetry, which a lot of the time is meant to be meant to be um, imagined as being composed by soldiers in the frontier. So, first couplet then. If I look eastward toward my old home, the road is much too long. 
My sleeves are soaked. My tears will not stop falling. So the first couplet, as usual, sets the scene and uh, narrates the story. We don't have any time indication, but we know that we are somewhere in the West because the, the poetic persona is looking east. And looking east is the capital. The capital, Chang'an, was already quite in the west of China. So if we are west of, of that capital, if that capital seems to be the east, we must be in the western regions or well on our way to getting to the western regions. And the road to Chang'an is too long. Now, this is a very common trope, a very common image in Chinese poetry. The long road, it appears in lots of ballads. Uh, so saying the road is long is a common image for the noting. Not only the physicality, the, the real fact that maybe the road from where you are to your hometown is long, but it's also psychologically long, because remember, parting from, from one's roots is always felt to be a minor tragedy for a Chinese scholar official, a severing of the root. And what's the consequence of this being so far away? Well, the poet... The poetic persona feels sad and is crying. So soaked sleeves, tears that never stop falling like rain. They are very, very conventional images in Chinese poetry and also in Japanese poetry reflecting sadness. Like one cries and tries to dry one's tears with the sleeves because the clothing, uh, the handful clothing that was traditional at this time included very big, very long sleeves. So you could say the first couplet sets the background. The second couplet actually goes to the anecdote that the title refers. So this traveler who is sad and who is quite a way, quite a distance away from the capital, meets somebody and gives him a message. We met on horseback, no paper or ink or brushes. So I ask you just to carry my words. Tell them I'm safe. So on the road, not even in an inn or in some, some stop, Mm, or in some town or village, the poet encounters a courier. Now, uh, w when you encountered other scholar officials, you know, it was common to perhaps interchange poems, writing, this sort of thing. But to emphasize the idea, perhaps, that Sun Shen is on the road, and perhaps he doesn't have any writing implements uh, on him, you know, the, the, the poet cannot write a message for his family. So he has to use just words. So this gives us an idea of the precariousness or of the difficulty of the, of, of, of the traveling. So he says, okay, I can't write anything like a scholar official would usually do, like write a poem to commemorate this meeting or write a letter for my, for my relatives at home. But I'll just entrust to your memory a very short set of words. I am safe. I am okay. Now, this might seem trivial. I mean, the poet... From, from, from what might be glimpsed in this, in this fragment. The poet hasn't yet reached the western regions, which would be the really dangerous place uh, close to the frontier and subject to barbarian attacks and to the, uh, life in the army camp. But, you know, traveling is always seen as a possible source of tragedy by scholar officials. Like, um, there were bandits in the roads, probably less during the Tang Dynasty and in well, mm, well-traveled and escorted roads. But, you know, illness, sickness... Death by, uh, while you were traveling was always a, a possibility. In fact, um, all partings are metaphorized as, 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 as death in, in, in most of the score official poetry. Like, parting is felt as maybe the last parting because of the fugacity and precariousness of life and the big distances of the empire. So, even though the poet has not yet arrived to a dangerous zone, he is probably far enough from Shanghai. To, to, to feel it necessary to just send, taking uh, advantage of the opportunity to send a message home saying, okay, I'm, I'm fine, I'm still alive, don't worry. And again, remember, distances were distances in this period, so communication was difficult. The emperors had their own career services, but individuals did not. So if you, if you were in the Western regions and you wanted to send a letter home, you know, there was no post office, you would have to rely on physically meeting somebody, a merchant or maybe a, an official who was traveling back home, entrusting your letter to him and hoping that he would get back home without suffering any accidents himself and deliver the letter, who knows at what time, to your relatives. And uh, I think that's it. As I said, pretty straightforward poem on a pretty conventional topic. It's uh, probably still quaint and, uh, and uh, likable in its direct sincerity and in its reflection of the difficulties of communication in a time long gone.